thank you for joining us for Season 5, Episode 4 of Adventures in Fly Time. Now here's your host, Joe Cornwall. The first thing that you want to do with a Mrs. Simpson is lay down a good thread base. I start my thread right behind the hook eye and I start laying down a flat thread base. This is an important uh, technique, an important uh, skill to have, is to be able to get a good thread base. And you'll notice that I'm holding this section right here, the tag end, I hold it out at a slight angle. That allows each individual wrap to slide back tight to the wrap before it, so I can very quickly lay down a smooth thread base. While on a fly like this, that's not critically important. It's a good habit to get into, because if you're tying with floss, or if you're tying with tinsel, being able to make that smooth thread base is very important. Stop the thread right at the hook point, clip your excess. Now the first thing that we want to do is add the tail. The tail that I'm going to use on the fly today is going to be calf tail and I'm going to use a little bit of the black calf tail on this dun gray dyed uh, calf tail. But you could use squirrel tail, you could use a little bit of bucktail, you could use fox, you could use pretty much anything that you want that complements the color. Remember that the Mrs. Simpson is less about a pattern and more about a style of tying. I've clipped off a little bit of the calf tail. What I want to do is get rid of all of that under fuzz, measure the tail, because I want that tail to extend out about one and a half times the hook gape to the back of the hook. So right about there, one locking wrap, and wrap back down the calf tail, three or four wraps to lock that in. Now, smooth underbody, and I'm going to advance my thread to about the one third point on the shank of the hook. So I'm at about one third of the tying area of the hook. Now I'm going to tie in my red yarn to begin the body. Lock that in with just a few wraps. You don't need a lot to really hold that in tightly. Now one of the things that I do want to do is all yarns um, are, are, are rotated, they're wrapped, they're twisted. So I'm going to go ahead and in this case I'm going to twist this um, to increase that twist so that as I start to wrap this I can make sure that the yarn holds a nice ropey texture which is going to give me a good thick body. Um, I want to build this up, I want it to be kind of fat so that it really holds those feathers in place. All the way back to cover the tie in on the tail. Now I can untwist that yarn just a little bit and that's going to give me a smoother over body. And you see I have a nice cylindrical yarn body there. Um, you don't see a lot of flies today with yarn bodies. They sort of went out of style in the 1960s or the 1970s, but I still love to use a wool yarn body. Uh, I think that it really can make a spectacular uh, uh, fly. It has a good translucency in the water, and it lasts for a good long time. So there's the first section of your body. The next step is to lay in the body feathers. The Mrs. Simpson is tied with stacked sets of three body feathers. So I'm going to start with my prepared feather and I want to measure that so that the end of the tail comes out about halfway from the feather. So that's my cut point right there. What I can do is strip away those barbules. Now I know that's the length of the first body feather that I want. To have a matched pair, what I'll do is I'll take the other feather that I've already prepared. I'm going to line them up tip to tip so that the stems overlap. Now I can see exactly where I've stripped the first one. Very easily I made a matched pair. You can start with the far side, that's how I like to do this. Hold that feather along the side. Now you're tying this feather in so it follows the shank of the hook. You're not tying this in like a wing. It's not tied on the top, it's tied in along the side. A couple of loose wraps will hold that in. Take our near side feather, place it over, same thing. Just a couple of wraps to hold it in. Now, if I need to move these around to get a better fit, I can go ahead and tug on those stems. When I've got it in exactly the right spot, I can just go ahead and clip those stems out. Be careful not to cut your thread. Clip those stems out, advance my thread to the next spot where I want to tie in the body. Now I'm going to split the difference going up the shank. You see I'm at about the halfway point right there. I'm going to take another piece of red yarn, tie that in, just three or four wraps to hold that in place. Once again, rope that tight, bring it back. We're going to bring this thread or this yarn back so that it completely covers the tie-in point. And you're also going to see what it does to those feathers is it kind of sweeps those feathers back, really gives the fly that shape. Now it starts holding a wonderful shape. You can allow that yarn to unwind a little bit, to flatten out, bring it back forward. Nice cylindrical body. 
lock that second segment in with just two or three wraps of thread. You really don't need a lot more than that to hold that in place. Clip away the excess. Now we're ready for the next set of feathers. We're going to do it exactly the same way. Now what I've done here is I have chosen feathers that are staggering in size and width so I get a little bit of taper. So once again, let's go ahead and line these up tip to tip so that I can make a matched pair out of them. Just like that. Now where do I want those to lay? Well I want to see that little spot right there. So there's my spot. Let's go ahead and strip that back. Start on the far side, lock that feather in with just a couple of thread wraps. Don't need a lot of thread wraps there. Take the feather that we've got for the near side. And when you're choosing these feathers off the pelt of the bird, um, if you're choosing them from the right or left hand side, they're going to have a little curve. Take a match set. So you're going to take one from the right, one from the left. If you're using feathers that came from the center of the back of the bird, they're going to be pretty straight. And you can pluck them two at a time and really get very good matched markings. Uh, it's not 100% necessary because if we look at a sculpin or if we look at a bullhead or if we look at a darter, they have varied markings depending on the lives they've led, really. Um, so you can really have a lot of variation. And once again, you can have a lot of fun on this particular fly because you can get so many completely different effects from different feathers from the ring neck pheasant. Advance my thread. Now what I'm going to do is stop here. I've got the width of the eye of the hook. I'm going to stop about the width of the eye of the hook back. That's where this last segment of the body is going to be tied in. Lock it in with a couple of thread wraps. Quick twist to get it tight and ropey. Bring that back. Cover the tie-in point completely. Allow the yarn to flatten. Bring it back forward. Nice cylindrical body shape. And then lock that in with just two or three wraps of thread and clip off your excess. Now, the final piece that we want to do. Once again, I'm going to match these two feathers tip to tip. If you really want to get crazy and you're doing show flies, you can actually put these flies between a piece of paper and run a hot iron over them and that will take some of that curve out of there. So we want to take that and that will make it sometimes easier to handle and frankly if you're new to fly tying, um, that's not a bad thing to do. It might make it a little bit easier for you to uh, be able to tie these materials in but you'll find that they're flat from the tie-in point even though there's a curve to the feather itself. So bring that last feather along the side, lock that in with just a couple of thread wraps. On the near side, lock that in with a couple of thread wraps. Check my fly on both sides to make sure that I've got the kind of taper and the kind of um, body shape that I want it to have, the kind of symmetry that I want this fly to have. Go ahead and clip that out. Now we're going to form a neat thread head. And it's important on this fly that you give yourself a little bit of working room because you do have a lot of materials there. Nice, neat thread head. Throw a whip finish onto the end of that. I've been asked a couple times why I use a hand whip finish rather than using a whip finish tool, and the answer is really simple. I'm completely self-taught, and here's a secret. I don't know how to use a whip finish tool efficiently, but I know how to use my fingers efficiently after doing this for 40 years. Now, you can take these extra feathers if you have some barbules that didn't quite lay the way you wanted them to. You can clip those out if you want to be a perfectionist. I assure you the fish won't mind. Go ahead and add a little bit of lacquer. I like Sally Hansen's hard as nails. It makes that indestructible. And there you have it. The Mrs. Simpson. What a spectacular fly. A lot of different patterns, a lot of different colors. You can get all from the same kind of a, of a feather, all from a ringneck pheasant. I guarantee you that the fish have not seen this fly before. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Tight lines. Yeah.